eastbound and down, loaded up and clucking. We gonna do what they say can't be done. It's a chicken run. Thank you, Vic. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky, for the song. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sutton's Days. I wanted to take you along today. We're going for the most epic grocery haul ever. It's gonna be so much fun. It is frosty out this morning, 19 degrees, but other than that, the weather's gonna be pretty good. So come along, we're gonna get some chicken. Okay, so we're on our way to another crazy idea of Lisa's. <laughs> Phil's driving. But it's a nice, bright, sunny day. Bonus, right? Bonus. Okay, you're gonna have fun with this? Obviously. This is gonna be fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sutton's Days. This week, we went on a chicken run. Yes, we did. There's a store not far from us. Well, it is far from us. It's 70 miles. Um, and the only time that it's really worth it for us to go there is when they have a big sale, um, a really good sale on something that we use and want to buy in bulk. So literally, I haven't been there since December of 2021, which is the last time they had this price. Very excited. Boneless, skinless chicken breast on sale for 99 cents a pound. And based on the conversations I had from the group members that saw this, um, this is an unheard of price anywhere right now and definitely around here. Average price around here has been going about $2.50 a pound. And I've been holding off because, well, you know, in December, I stocked up on 120 pounds of chicken. Um, but I made an error and I put all of it into jars. And so we went the whole summer without being able to grill up chicken or anything like that. And some recipes you just want, you know, the full chicken breast. Now, legitimately going through these chicken breasts, um, you'd swear some of them are turkey. They're so big, but it's a great deal. They had it for $9.90 for a 10 pound bag. Can't beat that with a stick, right? So we reached out to 19 of our friends. <laughs> so 20 households. We got chicken for, <clears throat> which was a total of 600 pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. We walked into the store. We went back to the meat area and one of the work, I stopped one of the workers. I said, I need to pick up chicken breast. And he goes, it's right there in the cooler. I said, no, I need 600 pounds of chicken breast. He didn't even blank. He just said, oh, okay, just a minute. And he turned around, went back into the storeroom uh, where he carted out 15 boxes. They each held four bags, so 40 pounds of chicken breast. And uh, we hauled that up front. And that's when this happened. Okay, so we ran into a dazer. Gaylord. Ta -da, Gaylord in the house. <laughs> so we're standing there trying to figure out our next moves. And who gets recognized? That guy right there. He's the one that gets recognized in the store. Hey, isn't that Phil over there? <laughs> so exciting. So much fun to meet somebody. And the funniest part was that they, they saw Phil. They saw Phil. So I'm like, okay, I can still fly under the radar. I'm good. This place is called Freddy's Family Market. It is not a chain market. It's not affiliated with anybody. And um, it's just this little market in this little town in northern Michigan. And they are known for this. They also had pork butts on sale for 99 cents a pound. Um, but I'm full up on that and flat out of freezer space now. So we ended up spending a total of $689.81. And their receipt calculates that we saved $2,474.40. That's probably the most fun part about the receipt is seeing what they, they think you saved, you know? Um, we had a couple of friends that said, oh, I don't have room for chicken. You guys would be so proud of me because I didn't go off on a tirade about, you know, you should be canning it so that it's shelf stable. But anyway, um, they didn't have room for it. So uh, they... <laughs> They said, hey, but butter's on sale. Can you grab me some butter? Or, hey, sugar's on sale. Can you grab me some sugar? Or, hey, coffee's on sale. Can you grab me some coffee? So the total for the six eighty nine eighty one dollars was including the butter, the sugar, and the coffee that we picked up for them, too. It was a lot of fun filling up the back of my pickup truck with 600 pounds of chicken. It was amazing. And so then we got home, called everyone, and said, hey... <laughs> Come, come pick up your chicken. Thankfully, the weather has flipped here. It is now officially winter. And, you know, it stayed cold during the, the time that people came to get it. Really, really a lot of fun. I spent most of yesterday um, vacuum sealing a bunch of chickens. So out of the 100 pounds, 
um, technically 110 because yeah, if you don't know this about me, you do now. Um, the orders that we had, including the 100 pounds that I wanted, came up to 590 pounds. And so I'm like, ah, make it 600 pounds. Yeah. Um, but so with the exception of 30 pounds uh, of the chicken that we were keeping, I wanted to vacuum seal it and put it in the freezer. So I separated all of the breasts and I vacuum sealed, sealed them individually because one of those is more than a meal for both Phil and I. They are huge. They're humongous. But I'm very happy with this chicken and the vacuum sealed stuff is all put away. I am now officially in the market for a chamber vac um, because I can't do the kind of stuff with a vacuum sealer anymore. Food saver just doesn't keep up with me. But we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to can up the last 20 pounds because while I was vacuum sealing, I of course had the canner out and I did 10 pounds. But now we're going to vacuum up 20 pounds of ugly chicken and I'm going to have you guys come along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed our little chicken haul. Before we get started on the chicken, this is the 10 pounds that, or 9 pounds that I canned up yesterday, okay? And I wanted to show you because we're raw packing chicken. That's what ugly chicken is. It is raw packed chicken. And I constantly, one of the most frequently asked questions is, well, the liquid doesn't cover the meat. See, like this one, it doesn't cover the meat. Raw packed chicken, raw packed pork, raw packed beef, raw packed meat is not intended to create enough liquid, okay, to cover the meat. That's not how it works. That's not how it's happening. Not, not, yeah, not how it happens. If having, <laughs> okay, if having liquid cover your meat is very important to you, you need to hot pack it because that's the only way that it's going to happen. No, you cannot add liquid to your raw packed meat because you don't know how much liquid is in the meat. And if you have too much, it will siphon. It makes absolutely no sense. You are taking the ease and convenience out of raw packing by wanting to add liquid to it. So if having liquid over your chicken is imperative to you and your household, okay, hot pack it. Now you see, this is all from one canner load. This is all from the same bag of chicken. Do you see how much the liquid changes? Because the chicken cooks while it's in the jar and then the juices come out. That is all chicken juice in there, okay? That is all liquid from the chicken, nothing else. And so that is the drastic difference. If I were to add liquid to any of those jars before I canned it, I can guarantee I'd have had siphoning. It just doesn't make any sense. So do it the right way and you get the best results. Now let's get going. According to the National Center for Home Food Preservation, who recently changed, well, recently, within the last few years, changed their um, headspace requirements, um, they are saying an inch and a quarter headspace when raw packing chicken for exactly the reason that I just talked about. Because the chicken that we have nowadays, I mean, look at these. These were some monster chickens, right? So, I mean, that's my hand, you know, and I have a, I have a large hand. So, um, because they fill them with liquid and whatnot, you know, it plumps up the chicken, guys, okay? Then it produces more liquid or could produce more liquid when you can it. They have no way of knowing how to regulate that, and so they change the headspace to help prevent further failures. Does this headspace make a difference uh, if you're raising heritage breeds? I have no idea. That's literally uh, a question that you need to email the National Center for Home Food Preservation about, because... I, I have no way to know that, and honestly, they are regulating for the masses, not the rare occurrences, okay? So, you do you. I, I'm, can't, I can't argue about it, okay? But if you read it, it's one and a quarter inch headspace, um, and you can cut the chicken, you know, I still leave it in fairly big chunks. It's raw packed chicken, pints are in there for 75 minutes, and... In quarts, they're in there for 90 minutes. There's only two of us, and anymore, a pint of chicken is literally three meals for just me. So there's no sense in me doing quarts, even though seriously, I was tempted with this chicken order to do so. I mean, look at look at these. It takes up half the cutting board, right? They're huge. So this is why this is why they changed the headspace requirements. Okay, one and a quarter inch headspace when you're raw packing chicken. It is all really good. Why do we call it ugly chicken? If you're new here, my name is Lisa, and this is Sutton's Days. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and I'd have to say that one of the things that people know me best for is for my ugly chicken. Why do I call it ugly chicken? Because there are some people out there 
who just think that it's too ugly in a jar, right? I don't can it raw pack because it's just so ugly. It's not fun to look at. That's what it looks like. Oh my gosh, that's unappetizing. I don't know about I don't know about you, you know, but to me it's food in a jar. Um, I'm not looking for an art project. So I changed it to ugly chicken. It is now called ugly chicken because it's so ugly, but it tastes so, so good. Okay, do you have to defrost your chicken before you stick it into a jar? Yes, yes, you do, okay? Because the time and temperature that they're giving you, the time and pressure that they're giving you for canning your chicken is specifically for <laughs> raw chicken, okay? And if it's frozen, it obviously is going to take longer for that heat to penetrate the jar, cook the chicken, bring it up to the temp that's safe to make it shelf stable. The whole purpose behind me canning chicken, besides amazing convenience, great tasting food, no chemicals or, you know, wonky processes that I'm not aware of um, on the commercial level, I am home canning this chicken. This is good chicken. What is in the jar? Chicken. That's it. Now, they do say at the National Center for Home Food Preservation that if you want, you can add a pinch of salt in there. I never add salt to my meats or anything else because being the grown-up that I am, I can salt it when I go to eat it. You never know what you're going to be doing with this, okay? It is so versatile, so easy to use. Why would I add salt, which could make it too salty for some things, not salty enough for others? You know, flavor your, your meat when you get it out of the jar. You are not saving any time by doing otherwise. So, and a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, it's great to have chicken taco meat ready to go. Then pull out your chicken, okay? And <laughs> when you heat it up, add some taco seasoning. Don't make this harder than it has to be. I know everybody wants to be creative. I know it's the artistic side of people that want to do this, but honestly, it's chicken, people. It is the most versatile meat that you will ever work with, and there's so many things that you can do with it if you just leave it plain and don't mess with it. If you want barbecued chicken, right, this is what I can tell you. Most of your uh, barbecue sauces have sugar in them. And when you are processing sugar at that pressure for that amount of time, there's a very good likelihood that you're going to scorch the barbecue sauce, which means you're going to scorch the chicken, which means you're going to have something that is not nearly as good as what it should be had you just pulled out a jar of ugly chicken and added some barbecue sauce. You know what I mean? So you have to weigh your pros and cons with this a little bit and come up with a solution that works best so that you're not unhappy with the end product and <clears throat> I'm getting chicken all over everything and you have a good usable product to use in the future we go through we go through a lot of chicken in this house more so now um, than before because like I said I will take um, a jar of chicken that's three meals for me and I will make meals for you know the whole week for me just using a jar of chicken um, and then there's the stuff that we use it for for Phil but we wanted some chicken. That's what this epic uh, haul was for, was to get chicken that um, I could cook whole. Because sometimes you just really want to bite into that, you know, piece of meat as opposed to trying to, you know, having it all shredded. Some recipes just require having a solid piece of meat. Okay, I'm sorry for the camera angle here. Um, so... We now have enough to put on the first layer, um, and that's one whole bag. Now, because of the reduced headspace in all of this, right, we, <laughs> we don't get quite a pound of meat into the jars anymore. Now, when we had one-inch headspace, you could pretty much guarantee that 10 pounds of chicken would fit in 10 jars. I have 10 pounds of chicken here, and now it fits in 11 and a half jars. So there's a little difference with the math, you know, but it's all good. It's still chicken in jars. Do you have to trim the fat off the, the chicken? No, you don't. Um, you can if you want to, but honestly, it makes the most delicious chicken juice in there that is great for use with gravies, sauces, soups. Um, you know, I, I keep it on unless it's super excessive, but it rarely is super excessive. So 
you can leave it on. Totally a matter of uh, preference, you know. But the fat is where the flavor is. You do have to consider that. And so that's why I prefer to keep it on the chicken. If you are looking for ideas for using your ugly chicken, um, there are so many out there. However, I do have a recipe collection available in my Etsy store uh, that gives you some ideas for using your ugly chicken. And once you get used to that, I mean, seriously, the opportunities are endless. Let me get this cleaned up. We'll start cleaning some jars. Okay, now we need to clean the rims because I didn't use a funnel, but even if you use a funnel, you, you still need to wipe your rims down, okay? I choose to do it with just good old plain white vinegar, so I'm just going around the rims to make sure that I have no chicken debris. It's also a great time to double check to see whether or not you've got any chips or cracks, okay? Because if you have any of the above, above debris or chips or cracks, then there's a very good chance that your jar is not going to seal, which means that's a whole lot of work for nothing. And we don't, we don't do that here. We like to make sure that our work pays off. Okay. Just have to show you. That's my mom's mason jar. Not like my personal mother. It's called mom's mason jar. I don't know if you can see it. They're square. I love them. I love them. So when I run across them, I tend to snag them up. I have an entire case of quartz that I'm just hanging on to so that I can pet them and love them and hug them and squeeze them, right? So we're gonna go through and we're going to wipe down the rims of all of these. I like vinegar for this purpose because it cleans it in case there's any fat that got on the rim or anything like that, which it did, I mean, this one does. So it's my opportunity to get on there and make sure that they are all taken care of, okay? Next, we will get the lids and the rings. And we will cure that finger tight question that a lot of people have problems with. Now you notice I did, these are not all gonna fit in the cannon load, by the way. Because of the new headspace, it's a serious guess at how many uh, jars I'll get out of a bag of chicken. That's the worst part about the new headspace. Because before I knew, 10 pounds, 10 jars. Now, it's a crapshoot. But, um, we're going to have at least one canner load with a 23 quart and then a smaller canner load with whatever's left over. Let's see what we get. How many do you think? As always, for this entire year, I have used four jars canning lids. They reached out to me last year, sometime late 2021, and said, hey, would you try our lids? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll give them a try. I said, where are they made? They are made in China. I said, that's not going to go over well, but that's the only choice that they have um, at the time. They are currently looking into having them made here in the U.S. You guys know what a dumpster fire we're living through right now. So um, they are working on it, but I know that that's something that they are seriously working on. They have been guests of ours on Monday Night Live now for three or four times, I think. Um, absolutely fantastic family-owned business. They are making sure they test the lids here in the USA. They're BPA-free, my friends. Of course they are. There's no lead. You know, let's let's just take that out of the equation. Now, the biggest part with four jars canning lids is that they are a great quality canning lid. They stepped up when no one else would during the pandemic. They stepped up and they provided us with a tool that we needed to make sure that our families and our friends were taken care of with shelf-stable food, real food, quality food, in our pantries. Nobody else, not one single company stepped up to meet the demand that we needed in order to make this happen. Four jars canning lids, they are my favorite. I have had three failures in a year, okay? And they were my fault because guess what? They were chipped jars, yes. So it was totally user error where I got failures. I am so happy with these canning lids and the best part is the price point. Any canning lid that has come out since the pandemic has had outrageous price points. I'm not paying 50 cents a canning lid. It's not going to happen. These are pre-pandemic pre prices on the canning lids. When you break down the cost, when you break down how much each canning lid is, it is pre-pandemic pricing. Absolutely fantastic. Excellent quality. Look at the compound on there. Can you see that? It's a great compound. It's got that lid that started being more predominant um, on canning lids. Absolutely fantastic. Failure rate, practically non-existent. Super happy with these. Yes, I am an affiliate, okay? 
no holds barred. I'm an affiliate. I work with them because I trust them and I believe in them. I don't have reason to lie to you guys. It does nobody any good at all. So yes, but the really cool part is if you order through the link down below and use the code Sutton's 10, then you will save 10% off your order. Buy them in bulk, buy smaller quantities, get whatever you can get. I'm telling you the towels on there. I haven't met a person yet that hates them. They're fantastic hand towels. So if you need kitchen towels, four jars. Yeah. But the canning lids, best canning lids on the market for the right price. That's important because gouging us for a higher price is unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable with everything that's going on in the world today. These guys are doing it and they're doing it great. They have phenomenal customer, customer service and fantastic shipping. I mean, it's there. Poof. Okay. So highly recommend four jars canning lids. Do you have to boil the lids? Okay, so the directions that Four Jars sends you with your canning lids will tell you to boil, to put the lids in simmering hot water, just like we used to back in the olden days, right? Olden days, like, you know, five, six years ago. Um, but they do not, it's not necessary. And in my opinion, for what that is worth, um, heating up your lids when you're pressure canning has never been uh, necessary because the temperature that it reaches in the canner is going to more than handle what is going on uh, with the compound on the lid. So absolutely not necessary. If you want to and it makes you feel better, no bad, you know, it's not a bad thing. Go right ahead. Um, I don't. One more thing I don't have to worry about in the world today, okay? Now, uh, when you water bath, again, totally up to you. They say to do it, but they're basically, you know, they're basically just using it as a precaution, okay? So... You do you, uh, and whatever makes you feel best. Look at that. Jars for miles. Okay. Now we're going to do finger tight. Okay. So you've got your lids on there. Now you have to put your rings on there. Super simple. You're going to put it on there. You're going to twist until it stops. That's it. That's it. Don't, don't crank them on. Okay. Because the whole purpose of this, as I've said multiple times in many videos, is that when you are pressure canning, it creates the pressure in there and it pushes out any excess air. That's why headspace is also very important, okay? Pushes out any excess air out of there before it seals the lid. It cannot do that if the ring is on too tight. That will also cause failures and problems, okay? So just finger tight. We're going to get the first ones on the bottom row. We're going to see how many I can actually fit. I know I'm not going to get all these jars in one load, but we'll see how it goes. Um, the size of your jars will make a difference on how many you can fit into the canner. A 23 quart. Some, I mean, I've had times when I could get 19 in, times when I could get 18 in, and it really does depend on the size of your jars, the uniformity of your jars. So because I have a mishmash of jars, it tends to mix up, you know, how many I can actually fit into the canner load. But you should be able to get nine or ten on the bottom and nine on top. Or nine and nine. If you can only get nine and nine, that's fine. Okay. We're going to get these in. I'll be right back. I'm using the 23 quart Presto today, which means I can double stack them, okay? And in order to do that, you have to have another rack. So there's one of these on the bottom of the canner. Never place your jars directly on the bottom of the canner. They will bust, okay? And then for the second rack, you also put one of these um, to stabilize them on the second layer. I will put a link down below for extra racks. When you buy your canner, if you're just buying a 23 quart, um, then it only comes with one rack. It's a conspiracy. I know. You got your rings. What happens if your ring gets a little rusty? It's not an engagement ring, guys. It's a tool. As long as it can screw onto the jar, you are good to go. Do not mistake beauty for quality, okay? When you use tools and you use them properly, then they're going to start to look a little run down. See that one? I didn't like. This one does good, okay? And you can keep an eye on them. I don't know if it shows. See the bend? That one bent. And when I put it on, I could feel it. So that one is going to the compost pile. Not the compost pile. Yeah, the compost pile. There you go. Compost bin. Thank you. Okay, so 
remember your tools do or your tools do not have to look pretty they just have to work the way that they are supposed to I have 10 on the bottom, 9 on top. Now we're going to put on our lid. The water's heating up. Remember, your chicken is cold, okay? So the water in your canner should not be very, very hot, but it can be warming up. Um, you don't want to risk thermal shock by putting a cold jar into warm water. So now I'm going to put the lid on, <clears throat> pardon me, and we're going to get a steady stream of steam. Once that happens, I'll be back. We have a steady stream of steam. Can you see that? Uh, 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 okay, so if you can't see it, there's a way to do it. Okay, so we have a steady stream of steam. If you can't see it, there's one way to do it. Take one of your old lids. Don't reuse them. Use them to get that steady stream of steam. Okay, so that's where it is. The pop lock, incidentally, did pop up. Not necessarily a requirement. It's kind of a... It's a... Some can or do, some can or don't. You know, but you want that steady stream of steam. Now we're going to start our 10 minutes. And once we hit the 10 minutes, we're going to put our weighted regulator on. Okay, so canner depressurized completely on its own. Once it did that, I took the regulator off and then I tilted the lid for a few minutes, okay? Because otherwise it can cause the things. Did you guys see the exploding chicken? I'll put the link down below and in the iCards above. Um, it was actually chicken broth that exploded. You want to make sure that you are not... Uh, changing the temperature too quickly because that will cause it to fail that'll cause siphoning so now we're gonna go here okay and that is our ugly chicken check that out that is amazing now I did a whole video about bubbling and whether or not it's a prerequisite for success and a lot of times, it does seem that if it's not boiling in the jar when you pull it out, that it doesn't seal. However, I have had them seal. So it's not an always kind of thing. Also remember, because I've seen this question come up a lot lately, <clears throat> is that you cannot tell immediately upon pulling jars from a canner whether or not it's been successful. They have 24 hours to sit there. Let them sit there at least eight hours, okay? Um, and don't worry about reprocessing them there. You don't wait 10 minutes. You know, that's way too soon. You won't know. You need to give them time to come down in temp so that the jars can seal properly. Maybe we'll hear one seal. Maybe we won't. I mean, look at the difference in the, in how much liquid there is in these jars. Ah, there you go. That is a seal. So that's a good thing. Okay. Now I have to get the second rack out. Okay, now we're going to pull out the second layer. They're still pinging. It's a good thing. So we will have a total of 19 jars of ugly chicken from one canner load. Theoretically, that's near 19 pounds. I love it. They're pinging. They normally don't sing for me on video. So remember to let these sit at least eight hours before you go checking them to make sure whether or not they have sealed. The reason that you are allowed up to 24 hours is because they're under pressure, okay, and the lid is there. So there's no air, no contaminants getting to it. That's why they say you have 24 hours. Um, and after 24 hours, then you have to either put it in the fridge or reprocess it. But don't worry about it until you get to at least eight that's my recommendation, okay? Because most of the time, by eight, you know whether it's gonna seal or not. So very important to follow the process, trust the process, do it the right way, and then you too can have all kinds of ugly chicken. Yes, you can, look at that ugly, beautiful chicken. It's amazing. Okay, everybody, I hope that all the tips and tricks in the video helped. I hope you enjoyed our 600-pound chicken haul and meeting a fellow dazer. And until next time, everybody, be safe.